The Rings of Power could have been a vivid anthem of a thriving world full of ambition and legendary characters doing legendary deeds to create capital H history. Instead, it was one of the worst shows ever made. I went into this show very excited and came out of it very excited that it was over and yet strangely numb to anything that happened either in the final episode, the broader series itself, or life in general. The Rings of Power has a very, very hard time with two things, characters and dialogue. This is a bit perplexing considering that at least since ancient Athens, plays and shows rely heavily on characters and speaking to create, well, a show. And yet the writers have dedicated the least amount of effort to these two elements. Every conversation we experience either seems to have already concluded by the time we show up, or it's too, it's too short, yet somehow also torturously meandering and never manages to go anywhere. It creates an unprecedentedly jarring experience where you can't get immersed in any scene in the show and definitely not in the broader world or story. As soon as you start to get settled in a scene, it moves on. As soon as one character gets close to articulating something that might begin to form a coherent thought, it moves on. Seriously, I have more meaningful conversations with Uber drivers at 5 a.m. on the way to the airport than any character has with another character in this show. Much of the time it appears that characters aren't even talking to each other. They're just reciting lines out into the void. So perhaps this is a total subversion of Tolkien and the Rings of Power is filled with postmodern skepticism and an extreme solipsism that prevents characters from talking to one another and in turn to the audience. The characters in Rings of Power turned out to be more like the thin shades of wraiths that will soon pass from Middle-earth than vigorous and fleshy heroes full of ambitions and potent abilities to do deeds worthy of song. Some of them are so shockingly neglected that it's obvious they should have been cut from the show's first season. I'm specifically talking about Isildur, Isildur's sister, Farazan, Theo, Bronwyn, and Arondir, who the story simply stuffs in from time to time and then abandons altogether. Trust me, we'll get to these tattered plot threads later. The one exception is Durin, who comes closest to being a fully realized character, though for some reason the plot never really moves him. He is already mired in a mind collapse, doomed mostly to a few rooms, slowly suffocating as the plot leaves him behind to perish. Legends like Elrond are somehow ever-present, but fail to leave an impression. Gilglad is around and that seemed to be enough for the writers. Then the show needed a hobbit, a hobbit's best friend, a wizard, and a reluctant king because that's what the Peter Jackson films had. It's almost as if you were walking through a Lord of the Rings zoo. You get to see these exotic creatures of legend from faraway lands, or creatures of legend you remember from the last zoo visit, but they're stuck in one place behind some glass and don't really move around or do too much. But at least you're able to see them. The character they try hardest to bring to life turns out to be the flattest and insipid of them all. Galadriel was mishandled from the start and was smashed, flattened, and suppressed into an uninteresting 2D video game character who has God Mode turned on. Unsurprisingly, it's pretty boring to watch someone play God Mode through Middle Earth. Galadriel herself doesn't have the opportunity to demonstrate much range as she only has one mode, Pwn Face, which only requires one facial expression, Pwn Face. It doesn't help that the video game designers who made her can't even give her compelling fight scenes. I think I saw a lot of Galadriel's action moves on Ludwig's run of Elden Ring. Anyways, they were either awkward or just totally absurd even for an action fantasy movie. Speaking of action, Celebrimbor should be getting a lot, right? 
Yes, you might recall that this story is about the rings of power, and you might then think that Celebrimbor would have a lot of the story's focus since he created three very important rings for the elves. You would be wrong. A genuine Celebrimbor story would require genuine invention, and that wasn't in the billion dollar budget. Celebrimbor is hardly seen and has been reduced to an old boozy lounge lizard who doesn't really seem to work and doesn't really seem to know too much about metal or crafting at all. I honestly wonder if he was subconsciously modeled on Hugh Hefner. Perhaps there'll be a Hugh Hefner bore bunny mansion in the next season. Another big miss was Adar, the orc father. Although Adar was kept in a box offstage for most of the season, the two most natural and compelling speeches come from him. This shows us that in the absence of Sauron, he threatens to take over the entire show from Galadriel because the show really shouldn't be about Galadriel at all. It should have been about Sauron and Adar on one side, and Celebrimbor and Durin on the other side, for this season at least. Now, one thing Rings of Power does exceedingly well is create an utter maelstrom of chaotic, conflicting nonsense. It's sort of like a perverse and malfeasant siren call of calamity, daring critics and casual viewers alike to try and keep their sanity as they're whirled around and around in an ever darker, ever more ridiculous whirlpool of nonsense. We'll proceed with caution here, taking Nietzsche's maxim seriously. Beware gazing into the abyss, lest it look back through you. In one of the dumbest ideas in television history, Galadriel jumps off a boat into the ocean at the edge of the world. The writers have immediately made it impossible for this character to live without a completely absurd event happening to save her from the eventual exhaustion and death. The nearest coast is thousands of miles away, and there's no reason for random barges to be sailing this close to the edge of the world. But one is! Deus Ex Machina, count one. Then, a sea monster strikes. Will Galadriel live? Of course! Deus Ex Machina 2. Galadriel, up to this point, has been depicted as a focused and ferocious warrior. She slays ice trolls effortlessly. Why didn't she swim underwater, stab the sea monster to death, and build a ship out of its carcass and a sail from its intestines, and then glide to Middle Earth and curb stomp any dark potentate that might still be hanging around. In an equally ridiculous but less entertaining moment, the raft with Galadriel and Halbrand is randomly met by a ship from Numenor. Deus Ex Machina 3 It used to be considered absurd when one Deus Ex Machina was used, but this is three all in the span of a sh few short moments. Another utterly ridiculous moment was the battle between Numenorean raiders and the orcs at night. I mean day. I mean night. I mean day. Are they riding from the west to the east with the sun behind them rising from the west? What the fuck is going on here? Anyways, the Numenorean raiders are riding with the dawn to destroy the orcs who have been fighting all night. On one hand, the riders expect me to believe that the orcs, who are primal murdering machines, haven't killed about 40 people in a single night since they have literally been there the entire night in the village fighting. On the other hand, the writers expect me to believe that the Numenorians landed on the coast at dawn, by the way, and within hours have made it all the way inland to this small village. Sticking with the orcs here for a moment, we are very deliberately shown that the orcs burn in the sunlight. They also won't charge out into the sunlight, even when wearing those light and protective white garments. But the writers clumsily contradict their own storytelling in the battle between the orcs and the Numenorians, where they are fighting in the light of dawn and none of the orcs are burning. Not even a tendril of smoke. Not only is this a ridiculous contradiction, 
but it's a major miss to demonstrate that they were a band of brothers and sisters. Remember Adar's speech? The writers certainly don't. And that they would fight to the death even as they burned rather than surrender their home. Instead, they were made stupid, unfeeling fodder like they have always been instead of differently oriented beings with their own agency and agendas for this new world. There are as many absurdities in the rings of power as there are stars in the sky, so I'll quickly move through a few more here. Halburn's got the fastest horse in Middle-earth, faster than Shadowfax. He leaves slightly behind Galadriel, who even whispers a light charm to her horse to make it run faster. Then somehow Halburn comes from the opposite direction and takes Adar out. This next one especially strains credulity in a way that was, to me, uniquely annoying. Once they unhorse Adar and get the mystery package, they don't check to see what's actually inside. Halbrun is about to die, then rides hard for six days and gets elvish healing and is quickly recovered. Fool of a took. Now, all these events are ridiculous for many reasons, but it might be said that Halbrun lives because he's Sauron. This is about as close as we can get to a literal deus ex machina, but there's still an even more ridiculous thing at work here. To any scrupulous character, and perhaps especially especially Galadriel, who is supposed to be the only character earnestly alert to the possibility that Sauron is alive, these things would have been huge clues that something wasn't right with this guy. Something was a little too special about him, which would have completely blown his cover. But Sauron is supposed to be clever and cunning. He wouldn't so obviously blow his cover. Celebrimbor, the second greatest elven smith of their entire civilization, has no idea how to work with Mithril. Sure, he doesn't know ring lore and needs that kind of help and instruction from Sauron, but to be baffled by the behavior of Mithril is a facepalm-inducing picadillo. Oh well, I guess that's why he was second best. Also, why does Halbrand, I mean Sauron, like Galadriel live after the vision duel. And even let me even backtrack there. If it was Galadriel that defeated Temptation by Sauron, shouldn't he be the one who's fainted? But since he doesn't, and she does, why simply disappear? Why not kill Galadriel with her brother's knife? Surely this is the sweet kind of violence a sophisticated villain like Sauron has come to delight in. But he doesn't do it. And let's not forget everyone's favorite bit of nonsense, the volcano eruption to the face. Considering the amount of nonsense present in the Rings of Power, one justifiably wonders if this was supposed to be a comedy instead of a work of the fantastical. Another thing the Rings of Power is fantastic at is its total inability to create a complete story with intriguing direction that points to an interesting narrative future. There are so many parts of this series that haven't been woven together properly that if it went out into daylight, it would be told it's wearing a repugnantly torn potato sack and to go back inside, burn that thing at once, and put on some real clothes. There's no sense of motion to the story. It's an endless series of glitches and resets, so the only motion you get is when you move your mouse cursor to close the browser tab. The writers have mistaken dropping plot threads altogether as building intrigue. Isildur hears the call of the sea in one episode, then never again. Maybe in later seasons that will become important, but if you're going to draw so much attention to it, give better foreshadowing about this strange voice, then subtly move away from it. Isildur gets trapped in a fiery building and the roof collapses on him. Oh no, what's going to happen? The problem with this is we know that Isildur lives, so there's no real suspense created here, and this should get resolved immediately, not just dropped altogether. Again, we know it's going to happen. Isildur's horse runs off. Gee, I wonder where it's going. While it's left is a dead end, we know where it's going. 
again, creating no sense of intrigue whatsoever. Elrond is recruited to help build a forge. The initial problem is they can't build a forge fast enough, which sends him to the dwarves for help. Once with the dwarves, he learns they've discovered mithril. We no longer care about building a forge. We don't even see the dwarves helping. It just gets built magically in the background. They just abandon the plot thread here altogether. The orcs are digging tunnels. We have no idea why. Competent writing would give us direction for further speculation, but since this writing team is dedicated to fumbling with mystery boxes, they just have to drop it all together for a reveal later. Simply because you start a storyline and then refuse to talk about it doesn't create excitement or curiosity in the audience. It creates the opposite, bafflement and dyspepsia. It creates awkward dead ends. It literally stifles everything else because characters cannot talk about the major things that are happening in their world. If you must prevent characters from talking about something because it jeopardizes your big reveal, you've only revealed that you're not a good writer. The Rings of Power revels in reveals that are not reveals. Here's the biggest question of the entire series. The question at the heart of the entire season. Why does this guy say, The sea is always right? It feels so wrong. But it does leave audiences asking from episode to episode, Why is the sea always right? Rather than open that mystery box, the brilliant writers reveal to the audience that the guy who definitely isn't a wizard is a wizard, and that the guy who definitely isn't Sauron, he just likes to hang out by forges and has a strange affinity for metal craft, is Sauron. Who could have guessed? In a twist of cruel fate, it turns out that the only people who didn't know this was Sauron were his actual followers. The creation of Mount Doom was the second most inane and underwhelming event of the entire season. We'll get into the most inane and underwhelming reveal here in a moment. There's no real setup at all, just a series of random events that in hindsight are supposed to be a surprising and cleverly woven thread, but in reality don't even really convincingly connect to one another once the reveal has occurred. It's just another reveal with no real setup. The most anticlimactic reveal of the entire season, and that is something very special given the mundanity of the reveals and rings of power, goes to the announcement of Mordor, perhaps the most iconic land in all of Tolkien, which is revealed with a font change. At this point, neither the journey nor the destination has been interesting. The writers know this, which is why they try to win over fans not with their own work, or Tolkien's, but with a slew of references to the popular film trilogy. The member berries that point audiences towards the Peter Jackson films only remind us of how terrible this particular set of playwrights are in contrast to those of previous generations. The member berries didn't endear me to this show at all, and at many points felt like hollow references that actually pulled me out of the story and the world altogether. Not that there was much of a world to wander through anyways. This particular world was as empty as Galadriel's stare and surprisingly claustrophobic for a land with such a large map. This is Tolkien for Iluvatar's sake. Show some grand sweeping landscapes and walking. Spend some time with characters camping and trading tales and poems under the starry night sky. The Southlands I expected to be sparse, and I can make a case as well for the Rooks lands being smaller and less dense as well, though I still believe that's a major miss not to show the Uruk culture and life. And while Numenor had a little bit of variety and a glimpse of what life there might be like, my thoughts on the Elves and the Dwarves can better articulate the shortcomings of the legendary human city as well. Let's start with the elves. Whether we were in Linden or Region, the places looked beautiful, but the elven kingdoms 
felt oddly sparse. If you're going to spend all the money on sets, how come I never get a deep insight into what the Elvish civilization actually looks like? Across eight hours, we only visit a random dinner table, an open air hallway with a painting, a tree overlooking a cliff, Hugh Hefnabor's chamber, and a smelting room. Oh, and a weirdly vacant field where Elrond was writing and a nice river. We aren't really taken through elvish lands and we don't get a chance to absorb the elven culture. What was it like day to day in the legendary forges of Celebrimbor? What does he talk about with the other smiths? Who comes to visit him? Are there great poems being recited after dinner? Are there special foods, special drinks, Special stones and metals, you know, anything. What are the other elves like? The medium of television is supposed to give writers the time to dive deeply into cultures, but instead we remained at the surface, consuming a TikTok feed of random elven sites. Let's teleport over to Khazad Doom, just like our favorite elves are able to do. Hmm. Khazad Doom is supposed to be this vast subterranean fortress full of great halls and a thriving dwarf civilization, but after numerous visits, we really only see Durin's one bedroom apartment, his kitchen, and a single area of the mine. Not mines, plural, just a single dusty room in a mine. Khazad Doom is a legendary stronghold of Dwarven civilization, and yet we only see one room in what we take for granted as a mine. For a show with this grand budget, where they were clearly spending money on sets and CGI backgrounds, they neglected building and budgeting for one of the greatest spectacles in Tolkien. We've only seen an overview of the legendary city once. We've only been in the king's throne room once. We've only seen his throne once. We haven't even been to a banquet. We haven't seen an entire mining operation. We haven't been to a tavern. We haven't wandered the streets of this great city at all. But hey, at least we got a Balrog animation. <laughs> 